you live a life and you and you go out on the streets and you do things, uh, there constantly be ideas and phrases and bits and pieces that you want to collect. Uh, and if you're not sitting in front of a page, even if you scribble them down, they lose their context and lose their moment. And so you get into this horrible routine. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, uh, but it's much safer for me to sit in front of a page and wait uh, and put and just keep writing. I don't wait, but I write things. Um, and then your ideas come into a context. I haven't written for too long. And it's like magic writing. You have to write to write. You can't talk about it. All my articulating it here is wasted when it comes down to the act. The act of writing is everything. Everybody's got a story. Writers write it. So the ideal world would be to write every single day for 10 to 15 minutes, um, like playing an instrument, you know, keeping yourself subtle, supple and, and subtle. Um, that's what it is to be a writer, I think. I don't do that. My writing routine, we assume that there is one. <laughs> um, yes, in an ideal world, I would have a writing routine and it would go like this. Actually, my favorite description of a writing routine is in a Henry James novella. And in the Henry James novella, the writer, who is a man, uh, gets up in the morning and he has a wonderful oak-lined st study and he has a breakfast which is cooked by somebody else and they clear away. Well, he goes into his oak-lined study and does some writing. And about 11 o'clock, somebody comes in with a tea tray and he has some tea and then he continues writing and then it's lunchtime and a lunch, a beautiful lunch has been prepared by somebody else and he has some amusing guests. And then they clear all of that away and he might have a stroll in his beautifully kept garden, which is kept by somebody else. And uh, then he might go back and answer a few letters that have been brought into him on a tray. And it goes on like that. I don't live that way. <laughs> so the answer to my writing routine is that I don't actually have a writing routine, but I do my writing in the time that I manage to capture from all of the other things that are going on around me. I try not to be too OCD about it, but I, um, I do have, I, there, there are particular pens I prefer, which are fountain pens that are throwaway, because I'm left-handed, and normal fountain pens don't work. I've been given a couple, and I just get ink all over the place, and these, but these throwaway fountain pens work perfectly. And at the beginning of the writing process, I always buy a notebook that seems to suit the subject that I'm writing, the subject matter. So when I was writing a book about some medieval tapestries, I chose this notebook that was of burgundy velvet, the, the color and feel of, of the tapestries. Um, and uh, I always like, I always enjoy going out and getting that. So the la and the last book I wrote um, was about fossils, and I got this wonderful marbled cover that looked a bit like stones on a beach. Um, so that's really important to me. I usually tend to write at, at home. Um, I don't, I'm not one of those people who can go and sit in a cafe, even though I write longhand. I don't, I don't, I, I don't like that. I need to focus at home. Uh, I often sit in my office, or if I have to get away from the computer, which sucks you in and tries to uh, distract you with Facebook and Twitter and all that, I will go downstairs and sit in the living room um, with my feet up on the coffee table and just write uh, that way. Sometimes I will rent um, a room outside my house. Sometimes I will go somewhere uh, where there is no way that people can easily phone me. That was before there was the internet. I mean, in a dream world, we wouldn't have email. Convenient though we thought it was at the beginning. And I was very happy when they invented the fax machine. But then that went wrong because people started you sending you reams of paper covered with ads. Uh, these things all have ups and downs. They all, there's always a, a good thing about a piece of technology and a bad thing about a piece of technology and a stupid thing uh, about a piece of technology. So the upside of, of um, writing on a typewriter 
um, was that it wasn't in script. People could actually read it, in my case. The bad thing in my case was that I couldn't actually type very well. So it was the little brush with the white stuff on it. <laughs> Remember those? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then they invented computers, and I thought, brilliant. Uh, but the bad thing about that is that I had to then be responsible for my own manuscripts instead of giving them to a typist, right? And then the publishers all wanted e-versions. So you essentially have to edit your manuscript before even giving it to anyone. So this is uh, on it goes with improvements leading to disimprovements all the time. I am pretty disciplined as a writer. I think I have to be, otherwise I just wouldn't get anything done. So it's always hard work start, starting in the morning, especially on a Monday morning. Um, but I do write pretty much nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, and that's, that works for me. Uh, so even if it is hard work to get going, usually by 11 o'clock, you know, I'm kind of, something is happening that feels a bit more inspired. But I have to do the work first to get, that, to, get to that point of inspiration, definitely. It wouldn't just happen by itself. If I'm commissioned, I write. Oh, so bad. Um, but I have a need to write. I should write, I should write every day because it's, it's liberating, personally liberating. I do a lot of thinking um, before I start writing at all. Um, and I like, I mean, with some of my novels, with most of my novels, I've had a, a pretty much a, you know, the sense of the whole plot and certainly an end point in mind, almost usually a final scene in mind that I'm working towards. And things might change a bit on the way. What does change for me, actually, is, um, is, all, is the characters, is their motivations, why they're doing the things that the, the plot needs them to do and how they feel about those things which in a funny way is, the, for, is increasingly for me is the most exciting part of writing because that's all about the dynamics of, of relationships and that kind of thing, which I find um, is really at the heart of, of storytelling. It seems to be all about plot, but it's really about feelings. I think that I write longhand because I, um, I think the sentences at about the speed that I write, I actually type quite fast, so this, um, it slows me down. I think about each word as I'm writing it, and I'm forced to really consider each word. Um, also, when I've written a bit, and I start fiddling around with it, changing things, editing things, moving things, I can see what, the, what changes I've made once I've made them. There's like a map of them, a road map of my writing. Whereas when you do it on computer and you change, you can't really see the changes. It all just looks perfect. It looks perfectly almost typeset already. And I think that that's um, too seductive. And it doesn't allow you to really look at sentences and paragraphs and the structure of it and, and make the kind of editing changes that you really need to make to get the writing to work and to sing. There's never a day when nothing happens. What happens is, is shit happens. There are days and weeks and months. That's the hardest thing about, about writing, having to resign yourself to writing shit for months and months on end. Uh, and it does happen that you can be eight and nine and ten months writing crap and knowing that you're writing crap and still having to get up next morning and look at that. Uh, but something happens. When I don't write, I become sort of closed, less agile, less agile.